My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people are my friends, just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Maybe it's take your parents to work day. Today might have seemed sedate. The Dow down 98. Yeah. S&P declining 0.2%. NASDAQ edging down 0.28%. Now there's strong data got weaker by the hour. But if you're over the age of 40, the only way to catch the biggest winners has been staying in touch with your children. Now, I'm always crediting my four blended family kids for ideas that I never would have picked up, uh, picked up on at all without them. That's right. Children make you a better investor. Just look at Snap, the parent of Snapchat, which rocketed nearly 30% higher today after reporting a stunning quarter. 52% revenue up much better than expected earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And daily average users up 19%. I mean, this was all that people talked about today. Now, that user growth is everything because of the demographic. A long time ago at TheStreet.com, we had a brilliant advertising guy on the board, and he explained that there's a small window of time where you can create habits that last a lifetime. It's when you're in your teens to mid-20s. Once you're past 25, you're much less likely to switch to a new shampoo or a new, new uh, toothpaste. Remember, when tobacco companies used to pitch ads to children, oh, they did it because that's when you're cannibal. So how do advertisers reach the younger demo? Well, they used to use TV. But we've now got a whole generation of cord cutters who can't stand commercials. These days, they like to have fun online, especially by Snapchatting each other. Snaps even put some programming on the site, and it gets views. Advertisers want those eyeballs before those eyeballs get gentrified into some particular product that will never, ever go back to their product. So how did I know Snap? Look, I'm not exactly in the target audience, but my youngest daughter is and loved its augmented reality photos. We used to put them all over me in my head, you know, all this stuff. I've made me look like a rabbit, and I'm surprised they didn't do it this time because I looked pretty stupid when I did it. Anyway, when the company was coming public, I got to sit down with CEO Evan Spiegel. And what did I do? I took a picture of him. Why? I wanted to show how cool I was to my daughter. (laughs) Didn't really work. Anyway, the picture was the equivalent of an off-the-record picture. So, But I did notice that Snapchat, uh, the product, was irresistible to my daughter. So ever since the company fixed its Android app, a major and costly obstacle, I've been telling you it's worth speculating. That's about 18 points ago. All right, how about Pinterest up 9% today? All right, uh, another one of my daughters is a baker. This summer, she was always coming up with these really cool ideas, something exotically good for when I got home. Wouldn't you know it? She was getting a lot of those recipes from Pinterest. Now, I'd already met the team at Pinterest and loved them, including the investor relations person who used to be my editor at TheStreet.com. Uh, as someone who started a targeted website, I thought Pinterest could own the whole youngish travel, leisure, and cooking aficionado sector if it could execute. Well, it, it succeeded beyond our wildest dreams, especially because nothing focused the attention on, on a website like not being able to go anywhere or do anything, including going to restaurants. Thanks to the global pandemic, the numbers for Pinterest are phenomenal. Now, your kids won't be able to help you discover the next Coupa software. They're not that good on service now. But they'll show you the way for uh, PayPal. Way back in 1980, I couldn't wait to get that Macy's credit card to establish a credit line. Apparently, my daughter had a credit history with PayPal dating back to 2005. Why? Because she orders so much stuff on Amazon. Even I couldn't miss Amazon, but I never would have realized the value of PayPal without my daughter. What else? One of my daughters is an artist. In In my time... You drew, maybe use watercolors, but this is the 21st century kiddo, so she used Adobe. It was right about the time they went into an all-subscription-based business model, and I, I, it's why I stuck with the stock even when the numbers got choppy. I've often told CEO Shantanu Narayan about her facility with his products. I joke that you need to have the kid in middle school to truly understand the greatness of his company because these kids want to tell stories. What can you do these days if you're an artist making your own designs? 
Well, you can dream of having your own store. Or you can just sell things directly on Etsy, which is what my daughter did. Next can be a, a virtual store using Shopify. I knew Etsy when it was run like a charity because I lived in Brooklyn where they are. And it wasn't like a business. I actually came up with Shopify myself when it was at $100 since I get a G now. But only because my daughter wanted to sell her stuff without setting up a, a physical showroom. And I figured, hey, you know what? That's Shopify. Next up, Google may be in trouble with the federal government for being too good, uh, but it was an inc- it's been an incredible performer since it became uh, came public 16 years ago. Now, I discovered Google because teachers told me on back to school night that kids were using it to cheat on their homework, and it was our job to police it and stop it. Talk about a reason to buy the stock. Holy cow. I mean, that's why I came on air the day it started trading and told you the stock could triple from where it opened. At the time, I was pilloried for being a brainless cheerleader. But the stock was at 80. It's now at 1,600. You tell me who's mindless. Only on Twitter, though, would that be a reason to trash me. Jimmy Chill. In the summer of 2019, my eldest daughter rented a Tesla and drove uh, from Oregon to San Francisco and said it was the most fun thing she had done in ages. A car? It's a car for heaven's sake. Well, that made my wife and I go drive one, and uh, we talked to some people, including a CFO, who said the balance sheet's good. And I came back here, and I said, okay, that's it. Buying the stock. Is it 60 bucks? All the people who love Tesla hated me because I waited till 60 Well, it's at 438 now, up $10 after a great quarter announced tonight. Of course, the three most obvious letters in FANG, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, were all names I got from my kids. I didn't know anything about Facebook until someone at TheStreet.com asked me if I had a Facebook page, forcing me to sheepishly ask my kids to help me get it set up. That said, I figured it out quickly enough that the pivot to Instagram came naturally. Netflix? I know it just reported some not-so-hot numbers last night, and the stock dropped 7% today. But remember, this is one of the magnificent seven. It's a story stock, which means that you should probably buy it tomorrow when all the disappointments baked in, probably by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then there's Apple. I realized Apple had something special way, way back when my daughter asked me for a mauve color. That's M-A-U-V, but I'm from Philadelphia. M-A-U-V, mauve colored iPod. I was peeved. What about the white one I already given her? Did she lose it and didn't tell me? Nope. She wanted one in a new color because it was a fashion accessory. Like with any jewelry, she needed more options. Adjusting for splits. That was when Apple was at $5. Now it's at $116. I've been pounding the table ever since. Once again, oh, and don't trade it. I've got hundreds of these stories. My daughter, who had, who had fluent in Salesforce at the bottom of her resume about 150 points ago. The Workday product used in college about 200 points ago. The graduation party staged at Chipotle, which reportedly allegedly disappointed numbers tonight. Oh, give me a break. How about the vegetarian kid who liked Beyond Meat at 40? Notice, many of these ideas have stood the test of time. They survived the Great Recession. They survived rising interest rates. They survived uh, p- uh, political assaults. Now they're being challenged by charters who argue that the stocks are making double tops. I say these companies have had more tops than the 46 mountains and the Adirondack high peaks that are over 4,000 feet, although actually five of them aren't. Hasn't stopped them from steadily working their way higher. Here's the thing. If you just listened to the professionals, you would have ended up in some stupid ETF that eliminated the single stock risk that would have created amazing rewards that they don't tell you about or be stuck with a struggling, classic, blue-chip, diversified portfolio of J.P. Morgan, Exxon, General Electric, Merck, and Ford. Missing out on some of the best news in history. The bottom line, on Wall Street, you always want to know early. And to know early, you have to listen to young people who are in their early years. Doesn't mean you can skip the homework. Lots of, my, lots of kids like MySpace and Fitbit and GoPro. Those didn't work out too well. But on the whole, these young people have a better sense of the future than we do. God bless them. So watch, listen. Maybe they'll take you to work and you can learn something. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.